this was becoming a very big issue. This became a very big issue, by the way, for 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 us because we were kind of we were, we were basically getting stuck in the geographic confines of Silicon Valley. Like we were, we, our companies were like penned in, and it was becoming very hard for companies to grow in that area. And then basically, you know, a horrible tragedy struck that turned out to also be in some ways a, a miracle in terms of, I think, the long run consequences, which is COVID, right? And, and, you know, none of us would have hoped that COVID would have, would have happened. And it has been a, a horrible tragedy for, for many people. And I think, you know, broadly for our society, but nevertheless, COVID was a system shock, right? That caused all big companies to basically instantly move online in a hard cut over, you know, in kind of a way that I never imagined was possible. Um, it was also an instant proof that companies really can run, at least for some time, they can actually run uh, online, right? It basically, like, no, no big company actually stopped operating as a consequence of this dramatic shift from, from in-person uh, uh, to online. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, that opened the door to, you know, every CEO, every manager, every entrepreneur, every investor thinking, oh, um, okay, the post-COVID world is not going to be like the pre-COVID world. The post-COVID world is going to be an opportunity to rethink and reinvent how companies are organized. It's going to be an opportunity to reinvent how industries are organized. It's going to be an opportunity to reinvent at, you know, how geography works, right? What the role of cities is. It's going to be an opportunity to spread the economic activity from cities much more broadly, you know, potentially throughout the country. Um, you know, every, every employer, every company, every CEO here, you know, is, is, is having some version of this conversation, you know, with, with their own company. We talk about this with our, our founders all the time. Um, and then there's a corresponding question that's opened up, which is how are people going to live? Um, and some people are going to continue living the way that they were. And some people are going to undertake a radical change in how they live. And they're going to, you know, they're going to go, they'll go remote. And all of a sudden, you know, you go remote and you have access to, you know, thousands of jobs anytime you want, which is a totally new phenomenon. Um, and then there, you now have the opportunity to rethink how, how families live, right? And so, you know, is it necessary for ambitious kids to leave a place where they grew up in order to have access to first class economic opportunity? In 2019, the answer to that was frequently yes. Today, maybe not. Um, and so, and, and I should also say, like, it, it, there's no, like, this is not a zero or 100% thing. This is not like a hard cutover. It's not like the whole world goes remote or stays remote, right, which is not what's happening. But there's this moment in time that we're in right now, which is like, we can actually re we can rethink and reinvent how companies are organized um, and how work happens. And then we can also reinvent how, pe how people live and give people a lot more options and how that happens. Um, and so I, I think basically the presumptions that have underlied the whole structure of how the housing market works and how the industry works uh, and how people live and work, I, I think it's basically all up for grabs. I think we have about a five-year window, I think, as a society to kind of figure out what this means and how to adapt. Um, yeah.